So good afternoon, Martin, and thanks so much for uh, jumping on to our Business Owner Spotlight. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself um, and tell everybody how you got started in business? Hi, um, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm delighted to be here this, this, this sunny afternoon. Um, my name is Martin Gilchrist, and I am the practice manager at Gilchrist & Co. Chartered Accountants. Um, how I got started was that Gilchrist & Co., mm -hmm is headed up the principal of Gilchrist & Co. is actually my wife, Michelle Gilchrist, Michelle Gilchrist, FCA. Michelle is a senior member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. And ever since we met, it has been something that we've always wanted to do. Almost since the first night, almost since our first date, we were talking about, because we we're both accountants, young accountants back then, ambitious accountants. We always were thinking about, we'd love to start our own business. And over the years, through ways and means, um, we have found ourselves now in a situation where we have a very successful chartered accountancy practice focused on looking after professional people in yeah. independent practice. So that's that's how I got to be where I am. Fantastic. So is that, when you're saying professional people, is that your kind of niche? Is that your ideal customer who you would look after Absolutely. Then? There's a reason that we work with those people. We understand them. So yeah. we obviously we both come from a professional background, professional yeah. training, but um, they're like fee charging professionals. So Gilchrist & Co isn't PwC. It's not KPMG. We don't have factory owners and, and hotel owners and, and manufacturers and all that type of stuff. Um, we only have a client base of 300. So we have 300 clients at any one time. And they tend to be professionals such as barristers or QCs, doctors, dentists, pharmacists, web producers, people in the music industry or the creative industries. And some of our clients you would see on TV, presenters okay. and, and, and the like. So the common thing between them all is that they are individuals working by themselves. Some of them now have staff. The business has grown and business has changed. So our largest client would maybe have, well, now they have about 60 staff and they're actually growing very quickly. But um, generally speaking, when we go out and talk to the world and tell them what we do, it's individuals working by themselves, whether that's working at the Bar Library in Belfast or Flockwise co-working space on High Street in, in town or working from a back bedroom or wherever that may be, they would be tend to be our core client base. Sure. Sounds interesting. And um, tell me, did COVID, what, what sort of impact did it have on on Gilchrist and Co. And, and is there anything that you're still doing um, off the back of the changes you had to make? Yeah, we used to have an office down in Belfast um, on the, up near the um, Nocturnal Carriageway up yeah. in East Belfast, Bally, Bally Snacky More, <laughs> as they call it, where all the wee yeah. coffees and restaurants are. And um, our, obviously our, our staff stopped coming in because you couldn't come in and it has worked very well. We still yeah. have we still have the premises, but um, we we don't have the staff in as much as we as we used to as as a matter of fact hardly at all. And some of our new staff and interns and stuff like that have never been in the office. We we, yeah. we need them in other places. So that I suppose that's one of the big changes that no need for an office. And we found out that it's it's not really required anymore. Our clients don't need to come and meet us in an office. You know they they much prefer that they we meet them out over lunch. Yeah. Our yeah. our um, associates and our um, our business friends, yeah, I, I was I was invited out for lunch um, with a couple of friends from business last week, and we went down into town. And it was you know, it was much nicer sitting having that conversation over lunch than it is yeah. in some yeah. stuffy old office. And the technology that we have now means that files can be shared and, and online cloud computing and, and Zoom and, yeah. and the likes means that you can still have to an extent, a face-to-face -face conversation without actually having to be sitting in the same room. Although now COVID's over, we're finding that we're going back to face-to-face -face meetings because there's just something nice about yeah. a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and a handshake and, and seeing something personally. Um, the, I suppose from a, a more serious point of view, the, the real hit with COVID was everything changed and the amount of information that was coming at us as accountants, coming at everybody. So the furlough scheme and the SEIS and, and all the different fundings and support that was brought into place for businesses that were being shut down overnight. Yeah. That was a learning curve for everybody. Even yeah. the, the 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 funding bodies that were putting out didn't really know what they were doing. Belfast City Council yeah. didn't know what they were doing. The, 
taxman didn't know what they were doing, and not only did they not know what they were doing, but there was nobody there. There was nobody in the offices yeah, to do course, the stuff yeah. that needed to be done. So it was chaos for a while, which meant that our working hours movement went, went, went from, you know, accountants work long hours anyway. It's it's just the nature of the beast. But it just seemed like we had no free time for, for a bit. So it wasn't that we didn't have work. We had far, far more work. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we just weren't getting paid for it because it didn't feel right to charge clients normal fees for doing things like um, furlough claims and all that type of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it made for an interesting time. Yeah, interesting is uh, probably the word for it. Um, but so it's interesting that hybrid, you're, you're finding you're going back to um, uh, to a little bit of face to face, but we're still going to still going to keep some uh, remote working in place then. Yeah, I don't think we need an office anymore, a permanent yeah. office. Um, I think there's better use for that space and, and forcing plant, our um, plants and staff to fight through rush hour traffic to, to sit at a desk doing work that they could be doing from somewhere more comfortable without losing two hours in, in traveling time or more every yeah, day. Yeah. So I don't think we'll, we'll necessarily be going back to that. And the hybrid thing does work very well. However, there are elements of what we do that does require you to be sitting across. Sometimes there's some enjoyable conversations. Sometimes there's some serious conversations, both with yeah. um, clients and with staff that you do need to be face to face. And for that, we would use um, the ever expanding resource of co-working and hot desking space that we're finding across Belfast. And there's loads of places you can do that from Titanic suites to or mobile galleries to loft space and clockwise and there's um, new but new premises opening now in um, customs house square yeah, i think they're going to be quite up. limited but you can yeah. you can book the meeting rooms you can pop up and use the meeting rooms you know so there's there's um scottish provident building as well as another yeah. and that's that's just but that's before you go over to city east and, and yeah. all the other resources outside town. so yeah i think that's the future yeah as i say yeah um, yeah, you can find that working environment just as and when you need it. Then, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so tell me what what's been your biggest uh, learning since you've been a business owner? Then, um, I th- I think the biggest learning I've had is you have to find your own way, and by that, what I mean is that your business shouldn't be what you think other people should it should be. So you, you, we all have a perception of what other people think of us and think of what we do and think of what our business is. And you don't have to live to that perception. What, what you should do in business is work out who you are and what you want and then grow the business around that. That's yeah. the route to happiness in business. Yeah. So in our case, um, we, wanted, we, we didn't want to be the next PwC or McGrady's or w- one of the bigger business or Goldblatt McGregor's or whatever that may be, because that's a different environment from what we have at Gilchrist & Co. We wanted a family practice. We wanted a lifestyle practice. And that may not be for every other accountant, but it certainly works for us. It means that we're happy in our work. So it doesn't matter that we work long hours because we enjoy what we do. Yeah. And it also gives us the opportunity to be not selective about our clients, but our clients can be selective about us. The, the people who work with us work with us because they want to for a reason. It's not because of some big fancy advertising campaign or because we provide some innovative service that you can't get anywhere else. You know, you go to 101 different accountants and get the service that we get for in and around the same price. I suppose some would be dear and some would be cheaper, but we're we're about the right price for what we do. Why do people come to us? Because we're the right fit for them. Yeah. So if you've got a business that's based upon who you are and what you want out of life, and you can provide what your clients need and what they want from the service that you provide, what you find yourself in is a lovely sweet spot where you're yeah. getting to do the work you enjoy and you're getting paid for it and people are satisfied and happy with what you're doing so i suppose that was the biggest lesson i learned yeah find, um, find, find your space totally agree so that's getting that alignment with your business serves you what you want to get out of life essentially instead of the other way around yeah um, and and then tell me what what's been the biggest issue you've had to overcome um <laughs> there's issues every day <laughs> Isn't there? Yeah. I know I'm telling this this lovely idol about oh yeah so we live in this very happy world Gilchrist and Co it's all wonderful but uh, you know you, well it's not there's not issues every day but when you're in business you're going to come up against problems sure. and and difficulties and um, you know people you know 
one of the funny things about business is the best thing about business is people and the worst thing about business is people. Yeah. And you, the analogy I use is that when you go into a classroom, any classroom, so we've all been to school and some of us may have been university or college and we've all been in different classes with different people. And you walk into that classroom and if you're there for any length of time, you're going to find two or three people that you just like, you know, that are your friends. And there's going to be about 20 or so people that you, you're not really... They're all right. You can say hello to them and the rest, but you don't really spend any time. And there's going to be two or three people that just rub you up the wrong way. You know, you just don't get on at all. Um, what I find is that I try to spend time going out into the world and identifying those people that I really like. You know, from whatever group of people that is. You know, yeah. right into the larger world. So whether it's the golf club or whether it's Ormobaf's Gallery or whether it's the Institute of Chartered Accountants or wherever that is, whether it's a group of people that you're going to be seeing in a regular point of time identify the people that you're going to you know maybe not as cynically as that but you know try try to spend time with them people that yeah. motivate inspire engage encourage teach you know support all that good stuff and spend your time around them what you'll find is it makes that business journey a lot easier yeah that makes sense and tell me so just when you're talking about um people who inspire you and, and motivate who would you say has been the best coach you've ever had and why <laughs> I, I could I could make something up <laughs> that would sound all very sensible and and yes that that's that's true Martin that's very, that's a very sensible coach you've you've done a very sensible thing um and there have been business coaches that I've had that well when I say coach I've had people that have been mentors sure. and coaches and. Um, yeah. In the past, that that have been very worthwhile. And one one guy I would like to, I suppose, I always bring up is is there was, and early in my career when I went into self employment, the first thing I did was I focused on looking after legal practices. Okay. So, I my I did law at university. I worked for an organization called Asdom, where I was responsible for putting in case management and accounting software, and then I set up my own business, uh, installing and training and assisting people with solicitors with their account systems and and basically firefighting where things have gone wrong and so basically I would be coming in as a consultant and sorting out issues um and there was one solicitor I came along and he owned a family practice the guy was called Pascal O'Hare he's a famous solicitor in Belfast yeah he passed away now unfortunately but Pascal when I came across first was you know he might have been in his 80s so he was past retirement age, but he still came into the office because he enjoyed it. And he had his own circle of clients that, that wanted to work with him. So. And he would come in and he would speak with me. So I was I was a nobody. You know, he didn't have to spend any time at all. But he came in and he would tell me stories about being in the U.S. Army and how he became a solicitor and what it was like at the start and how he grew his practice, being very successful. And it wasn't until I went out with, we, we went out with, for dinner a couple of times in the practice. And when you went out, and you'd be meeting, you'd be out at these places and there'd be judges and there'd be senior QCs and there'd be really senior members of, you know, government and, and law and all the rest. And everyone deferred to this guy. He was respected everywhere by any, anybody that was anybody in the legal environment respected yeah. this guy. And I was going, why would this guy even, even spend his time talking to me? But he was, he was generous and he was, he was a good guy. And one of the lessons, one of the things he said to me, Martin, was Martin, see when you go into practice, and he, he knew even then, but like, like I, I was I was a freelancer then, I didn't have a practice, but he said, he said, Martin, you're, you'll be running a practice one of these days. And he says, when you go into practice, just be aware. See the people you start in business with, big or small, and they'll probably be small. Hang on to them and hang in there with them because your practice will grow with them and they will grow well with you. That's a good client base. If you have a client base that grows with you and grows old with yeah. you, you'll have the same clients at the end as you had in the start. Not not all of them, but the clients that stick with you will be the ones that keep your firm going through thick and thin. And we have been in business. Gilchrist has been in practice now for 16 years, thereabouts. Um, and we still have some of our clients, many of our clients that we got right at the very start. And I yeah. think that's very true. And if, if 30 years from now or 20 years from now, when I retire, hand the practice over, well, maybe it'll be sooner than that before my son takes over he's, he's joined us in the back so already um if we still have those clients with us or 
members of their families. And yeah. I, I think that would be a fantastic legacy. So it, it's, I was going to say, it's testament to the job that you do if they're prepared to, to stick with you as well, isn't it? It, it is and it isn't. The thing about accountancy is it's it's very hard to change. Well, it's not very hard to change accountancy. You can go, there's, as I say, there's 101 accountants that would do what we do. But there's a rigmarole, right, rigmarole involved in all of that. So you, you sort of have to tell your accountant that you're leaving and there has to be a, a reason for leaving, you know. Yeah. Um, so generally what we find is that if somebody leaves, they've got too big. They need services that we don't provide, R&D tax credits or capital allowances on commercial properties or tax planning or wealth management planning. We, we don't do those things. We're focused on the four services that small businesses need, self-assessment tax returns, corporation tax returns, VAT and payroll. That's all we do. But we do those things really, really, really well. You're not going to get a better service in those things than what we do because that, that's our pure focus. Um, so people will might get too big or they retire, you know, or they... You know, they just run out of steam for whatever reason, and, and and they decide to go and do something else or whatever the case may be. So we 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 generally tend not to lose clients on on bad terms. But yeah, if if a client is leaving just to go to another accountant, and there's not a reason like that, you know, generally that you, you, something's gone gone wrong. So people don't tend to move accounts for nothing. So it, there is a degree of the, the very short answer to your question is there is a degree of stickiness there so that's not the case that would be unusual sure. to have a client, a, a client for a very long time and and tell me just when you mentioned maybe your, your, your son's just joined the business and and uh, you know a few years down the line what what is the what's the future look like for um, Gilchrist and co and, and what do you see as the main challenges moving ahead okay um we are incredibly happy with the practice that we have now so at any one time we have about 300 clients the practice is ambitious. The practice will still grow, you know, and the way our practice grows is simply by our clients growing. So if you imagine a, a early stage new business comes in and that guy just, our lady just needs a self-assessment tax return. But after a year, they may have a requirement to do VAT returns. That's an additional service. And then they may decide to register as a limited company. That's an additional service. And then they may take on staff. And there's payroll as well. So that one client could start off at maybe £300 a year. Yeah, and they yeah. could up and ultimately end up being worth £2,500 a, a year to us. Yeah. The client's still happy because they're getting a really good service at a competitive fee. You know, £2,500 for a, a little company and payroll and VAT and self-assessment tax returns is, is actually very competitive. I wouldn't say it's cheap. It's it's still a lot of money, but yeah. it's, it's, it's highly competitive but it's a fantastic service as well. So that practice for us works very well. You know, yeah. it, there's, there's, there's nothing else that Michelle and I need from the practice to grow. However, um, our son is much younger and he's coming in at a different place in the practice right. and his, his ambitions are somewhat different. So he would like to um, maybe expand into maybe take, take, an element of the practice over to England, have, have okay. a London office or a Manchester office, and use the benefits of our highly educated workforce here in Northern Ireland. So we have, we have two, three really good universities pumping out yeah. really well-qualified young people who don't necessarily want to have to go abroad anymore. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we would love to be able to, well, his ambition would be to employ them here. But obviously the rates, you know, the cost of living here is an awful lot less when it would be in London. So okay. therefore would be very competitively priced. So there may be something in that and, and the use of technology and all that type of stuff. You know, practice changes all the time and the way we do our work changes all the time. So um, I imagine there'll be considerable change, but at the same time with that ethos of uh, relationships, personal relationships with clients over a long period yeah. of time, I would certainly like that to continue. Sounds good. And, and just before we finish up then, Martin, so... If you were to go back in time, what piece of advice would you give an 18-year-old Martin? Um, <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, well, the, again, is it the honest advice? <laughs> give a clue. Give a clue. <laughs> There's lots of advice I would need when I was 18. Um, I, I think... I think a general piece of advice, 18, 25, 35, or even now, it's that no man or woman is an island. You know, this shirt that I'm wearing on my back, I didn't make it by myself. The microphone, the computer, the telephone line, 
you know, everything about our existence comes from some, even the thoughts and language we speak comes from somewhere else. So, so you're not, you're not this isolated super being that can do everything by yourself. And you have to acknowledge that you're not an island. You have to engage with people. Now, the people that you engage with are programming you. You know, they're, they're, it's through those conversations. Yeah. It's through that inspiration. It's through that um, learning and teaching and, and, and people who, you know, you, you don't get on with, teach you some. People you do get on with, teach you some. Be selective about the people that you have around you because you really want to have the people around you that will help you get to where it is that you want to get to. Like not everybody will be like me and satisfied with a small regional accountancy practice. Some people will want to be the next Elon Musk, you know, you know, building rocket ships to Mars or, or whatever, but you need to find the people that will assist you on that journey because you're not going to get too far by yourself. That would be my primary piece of advice. Yeah, like, and it's yeah, it's get it's having the right people around you to to help you out where you where you need help, where your maybe your weaknesses are to to supplement that. Absolutely, you'd yeah. almost said I think I did that on purpose. I didn't, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it's a good piece of advice, and it yeah. stands. It always stands. Sounds good. Well, look, Martin, thanks so much for coming on. Really enjoyed our chat. Um, so much good information in there. I think everybody's really going to enjoy it. And again, I really appreciate you taking the time. No, I enjoyed it. Thanks for asking me on.